Welcome to our exhibit. The iconography of goddesses has not only changed throughout history, from Paleolithic ages to medieval times, but also the fluctuation between the function exemplifying power or the lack thereof. We can evidently see the roles between men and women changing throughout time. And given today's current events, is equity really enough? Whether we're discussing unequal employment opportunities, sexual objection, unequal access to education, or forced early marriages, gender inequities still continue to exist. Women have been considered not only a major source of temptation, but also intellectually inferior to men. Come indulge yourself in our exhibit, where you will see the iconography of the roles of goddesses fluctuate and influence the role of gender today. Hope you enjoy this experience. Now my art historians will take you through the exhibit. The Venus of Willendorf, now known in academia as the Woman of Willendorf, is a 4.4 inches high statuette of a female figurine estimated to have been made between about 28,000 and 25,000 BCE. Arguably, one of the most important periods in art history is Paleolithic art. We do not know much about this time period, but most of what we do know comes from the art we discovered. It was a matriarchal society, and that fertility played a big role in that. This figurine had no feet or facial features. This implies that the artist did not give much care for naturalism and that the focus was on her fertile shape. We can assume that humans of the time wore clothes and it was not common in Paleolithic art to display them. This was most likely not meant as a way to sexualize a human form, but to put emphasis on its purpose. For the Venus of Willendorf, it was to indicate that the woman's childbearing capabilities were idolized at the time. Previous to the New Kingdom, women's roles were more behind the scenes. A great shift occurred when Hatshepsut became the first notable female monarch of the time. In order for her to be pharaoh, however, she had to disguise herself as male. She wears the same uniform that of a pharaoh, such as the pharaonic headdress, garb, and false beard. Pharaohs are seen to be divine beings. Hatshepsut had gone to great lengths to acquire a power she believed was rightfully hers. Though she was in the position of power, she struggled to keep it as she had to disguise herself as a man in order to obtain it. This raises a question. Does she truly have power? It seems as though Hatshepsut essentially becomes less empowered as she is not her true self. One depiction of her in disguise is Hatshepsut with the offering jars. By not only acting as a male, but also doing such rituals and offerings made to the gods, Hatshepsut is seen to be superior figure in Egypt. From the Temple of Athena Nike, a temple on the Acropolis of Athens, came a marble depiction of Nike adjusting her sandal. This high relief panel of Greek goddess Nike was created in 410 BCE during the Peloponnesian War. In hopes of a successful outcome, Nike translates into victory, although it was not quite depicted that way. Instead of illustrating a narrative of triumph, the interest is more so revolved around the intricate folds of wet drapery that engulf Nike's body. Created to be worshipped for power, she was instead portrayed as a sexualized object. Nike is represented as sexually submissive, fragile, and obviously very feminine. This relates to gender inequity in the sense that her power could not surpass her appearance. The relief more so reveals a focus on human anatomy, whilst moving farther away from realistically describing the victory of the Peloponnesian War. The Virgin and Child enthroned in a mosaic found in the apse of the Agia Sophia Constantinople, dedicated in the year 867, this mosaic piece sets off a different narrative than other goddesses depicted in the art pieces. Rather than Mary being the divine being herself, Jesus, her son, takes her place. Mary is seated on a throne which portrays her as a higher power and royalty. Do to the fact that Jesus is seen as a symbol of wisdom, Mary would naturally be considered the throne of wisdom. This depiction of Mary is important as it shows that though she is powerful, she is ultimately inferior to the Son of God, Jesus.